You're listening to the Love Unplugged podcast, episode 134. Does the thought of investing in yourself scare you? Do you procrastinate when it comes time to doing your finances? Are you ready to make a change so that you can finally see different results? Then today's episode is for you. We're taking a deep dive into how you can develop a healthier relationship with money and how you can elevate your mindset. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hey there, I'm your host, Jessica Fergon, and I am passionate about doing the inner work needed to reach your goals. Let me be your guide as we navigate all the fears and insecurities that surface when it's time to step outside of your comfort zone. Along with my knowledgeable guests and industry experts, I'm here to teach you how to reawaken your life purpose and passion and create the steps to turn your intentions into action. Ultimately, my goal is to empower you to rise above those blocks holding you back and start living a life that you are worthy and deserving of. So come on, it's time to slow down, find a comfy spot with your favorite organic tea, and get inspired. Thank you for tuning in to the Love Unplugged podcast. Hello loves, today I am joined by the lovely Amanda Bible, founder of Inner Beauty Bible and co-host of the Related with Amanda and Carly Bible podcast. She is a money mindset coach, motivational speaker, and is a master certified NLP practitioner and trainer, master certified success and life coach, master certified hypnotherapist, master certified time techniques practitioner, and EFT practitioner. Now she basically does it all and she has all the tools available to her um, so that she can help her community and her clients. It's her mission to empower women from around the world to pursue their true calling by shifting their identity and smashing their fears so that they too can create an authentic and fulfilling life on their terms. I am obsessed with that. That is amazing. And I cannot wait to dive more into this with you, Amanda. So welcome. I'm just so honored to have you as my guest. I'm so excited to learn all about your story, your advice. But before we start, for those that don't know you yet, I would love for you to share a little bit about you personally. Yay. I am so excited to be here. And it's funny because as you were going through the introduction, I'm like, I can't help but laugh a little bit because it just sounds like there's just so much. (laughs) (laughs) And um, we'll get into that a little bit later. But hey, everybody, my name is Amanda Bible. I am a wife to my soulmate. We've been married for about three and a half years now. I am a new mom to an eight month old Julian. He's also my other soulmate. You probably hear him making happy noises in the other room. Um, I'm a cat mom. I have Fuzz and Pablo. Usually they're grace. I'm graced with their presence inside of my office, but today I'm not really sure where they are. Um, Typically I'm an early riser. Now that I have an eight month old, it's changed a little bit. I love coffee. I'm highly caffeinated right now. (laughs) In case case I start talking really fast, you know the reason why. Um, I love yoga. I'm from New Jersey. I was living in New York City for a bit. Travel is my favorite thing to do aside from spending time with family. And yeah, I, I just love love and life and the pursuit of happiness. And I'm just excited to be here. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I love that. And congratulations on your baby. I know eight months ago, but still that is a new phase for a woman, right? (laughs) A lot of changes come with that. So congratulations with that. And I I love hearing baby sounds in the background. It's amazing. (laughs) It's the best. Honestly, every time I hear him making noises in the other room, I'm like, oh, that's his dolphin sound. That means he's really happy. (laughs) Oh, oh, mom, why why is he making that noise? You know, (laughs) you know, it's just, it's a next level of, um, I guess, added to woman responsibilities and it's amazing. And I wouldn't have it any other way. (laughs) Oh, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to have my first child to just experience all that. It just, it I, like, I'm sure it's exhausting as hell, but there's so much love and joy that comes from that. And there's nothing else like it from what I've heard. Uh, exhaustion isn't even the word to describe it, but there's also no other words to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> so, in, in the terms of like love and all the things. So mm-hmm. it's just amazing. And I'm excited for you to experience it too one day. Yeah. All right. So let's dive into this. Let's start at the very beginning prior to creating your business and your podcast. What was your career like? What did you go to school for? What were you planning on doing? 
Um, so I actually went to school. I have a bachelor's in exercise science and um, kinesiology. Mm -hmm. And I never did anything with it, to be honest. And sorry, mom. <laughs> I think the reason why I initially chose my major was because all of the cute football players were doing exercise science. And in <laughs> past life, I was a cheerleader. And, you know, when you first go to college, you're experiencing freedom for the first time. So I kind of just like fall. <laughs> I, was, I followed what everyone else was doing. Um, I do not suggest anyone try that at home. Um, but yeah, after school, after I graduated, I ended up actually falling in love with um, nutrition and infusing nutrition into exercise physiology. And uh, what I ended up doing had nothing to do with my degree. Um, I ended up an executive assistant in corporate America. Um, I supported founders of um, hedge fund, founders of private equity firms, and just basically the fast life in New York City is what really, um, what I was really attracted to. I chased title promotions and salary increases. And initially, um, for anyone who is in the administrative field, I was an executive assistant. And the pinnacle of being an EA is supporting founders in the finance industry because of course the pay is the best and the status and the people that you surround yourself with and that was always my goal quote unquote in a way because I thought that's what I needed to do so I was always working towards that title however um, what I realized really fast is that I didn't actually enjoy <laughs> supporting founders and CEOs that I really wanted to be my own CEO so yeah, it was uh, definitely an interesting journey and everyone's journey is a little bit different. It's interesting that a lot of people have this view of corporate, right? And then once you get in there, you want to climb that ladder. It's like this, I don't know what to call it, but it's like it sucks you in. And I just, yeah. I don't understand why that is so appealing right off the bat when you're so young, when you have this whole other option or even other options available to you as well. Mm. Yeah, I think as just someone who had just graduated and, you know, kind of testing out what was next for me. I mean, at the time, like we, I used Craigslist, which is like, mm -hmm. I guess I'm dating myself. Um, <laughs> but like Craigslist for jobs, post job postings, momster indeed. And like, every time I would see a position posted for executive assistant, it had like this big number on it. And I'm like, what is this person doing that they're making that much money? And as an entry level, anywhere else that I was going to go with an exercise physiology degree, it didn't even compare. So for me, it was always about the money. Mm -hmm. And it, I guess I found out really fast, like going through um, the court, climbing the corporate ladder that there's literally no amount of money that would create that fulfillment at a soul level. Like, and what I noticed too, is that I was always looking for a new job. I was always looking for the title promotion. And what it all came down to was because I was, I was searching for fulfillment in the corporate world when I just was never going to find it there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's interesting. You went for the money. Me was the prestige mm. of like working in that fancy, nice office and like being part of that type of vibe and environment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I guess that's part of it too, is a lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. Um, to say I work at a hedge fund in New York city, like There's something sounds, about it, right? <laughs> right? It sounds fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fancy. I, I guess there's really nothing fancy about it with like, you know, 12 hour, 24, seven days. <laughs> oh God. You know? That's how they suck you in. Right. It's it really the whole is. appeal of it. But really when you get in, you're like, oh God, what did I do? Right. And honestly, I think, it, you know, people, <laughs> me, I'll keep it on myself, specifically me. Mm -hmm. I got addicted to work you know, I got addicted to the, um, I guess the hours per day and just like always being connected to my phone. <laughs> Not that that's a good thing, but that's just how it happened. You know, I was just, it was like a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can totally, totally relate to that. What was that breaking point where you're like, you know what, this isn't working for me. I got to try something else. How did the idea for your business and your podcast come to be? Yeah, so it was actually probably a decade in the making, to be honest. Um, anytime that I 
was looking for a new job, I was also like toying with the idea of starting my own business. And I had several, like I could count on all my fingers and all my toes, the number of businesses I tried to start to like plot my corporate escape. Um, you know, everything from flipping homes to a window washing company that I thought was going to be my ticket out of town. Um, it was called Clean AF, by the way, and I even ordered business cards. But anyway, <laughs> besides that, I, seriously, though, I, I tried everything to um, escape corporate. I, I was I was searching so hard to find my answer. And the straw that broke the camel's back for me was in January of 2019. Um, as an executive assistant, of course, I was always running errands for the, um, the CEO of the company. And um, he, it was raining. And I remember the day specifically, it was raining, it was freezing cold outside, it was January, it was cold, it was gloomy. And he had me go out to get Starbucks for the office. And he didn't ask if I wanted one, not that he really needed to ask if I wanted a Starbucks. I probably could have just gotten one for myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I think as I was walking to Starbucks, I just had this like epiphany, like, what am I doing? It's pouring rain outside. I got ready to look nice to come to the office. Now my makeup's everywhere. My hair's all over the place. I'm freezing cold and I can't even get a hot coffee for myself, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? So that was initially the straw that broke the camel's back. And I think, you know, the definition of insanity is like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And for me, I had spent eight years trying to start businesses. And each time I was expecting something to just kind of stick, but I was never doing anything different on the inside. And I actually did what like normal people do. And I Facebook stalk people, Instagram stalk people. I started like searching for my next job on LinkedIn. And I actually found someone who was advertising like a personal development, um, like a personal development program. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Um, Let me look more into this. And she was sharing the testimonials from clients and they really resonated. And I'm like, that sounds exactly like what I'm experiencing right now. And it had nothing to do with business. It had everything to do with like the confidence and feeling successful and achieving goals. So this was the first ever time I made an investment in myself. And it was for, I think it was for like, $1,600. And I was going to die making that investment. It was so scary because I'm like, what is this going to, like, how is this going to be different? Um, What am I going to feel that's different? And that 30 day program changed my life because she facilitated something that I had never experienced before, which was NLP, which when you went through all of my certifications, you see that I am now a trainer of NLP because it changed my life so drastically. Um, But basically it was so simple. She asked me to just define what success meant to me. Mm -hmm. And all along I had been stuck in comparison mode of like what I thought success needed to be, not what I wanted it to be for me. Mm -hmm. And I looked towards everything externally for success, for like the definition of success, what success looked like, the CEOs that I was, um, that I was supporting, that success, like owning a hedge fund, that success, going viral on social media, that success, being on the big screen, like Angelina Jolie, like that success and all of that like, first of all, I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So of course I was sabotaging myself. And second of all, it felt just so crazy, crazy and unattainable for me. So that was like another thing that came up too. So when she basically was like, just what's your definition? I was like, oh, I get to choose. I know. Right. It's like, what? (laughs) Yeah. Like I get to choose. That's insane. So that actually, that those 30 days changed my life. And um, that's kind of what gave me the idea that like, it is possible for me to do this because all those other businesses that I started, like they were all for the, I wouldn't say the wrong reasons, but I didn't have the right intention um, behind it. And I definitely didn't think about myself in the right way for me to actually become successful, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. What was your process in starting your business? So coming up with exactly the idea for what your business was going to be, what you were going to offer your community. 
Mm. So it's definitely been an evolution um, ever since the first day that I started. Um, when I first started my business, it was uh, I was doing one-to-one career coaching for women. And specifically, I was helping them to craft like their dream resume for their dream job and da 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 And what I found out really fast was that like, I didn't want to help people <laughs> get into another corporate job. So, <laughs> so then it kind of evolved into helping people start their own side business. And then it evolved into helping people, um, you know, feel confident about starting their own side business. And then as I began to evolve internally, um, you know, with how I believed about myself and my ability to affect change, I started to create group programs. And then I got certified as a um, life coach, but also as an NLP practitioner. And then I got master certified. And as I started to obtain these certifications, it then began to empower me with more tools to help people to do the same thing. And instead of just, you know, working with someone on a one-to-one basis, I wanted to give people these like magical tools, like, cause that's what it feels like. It feels like magic as soon as you start using these tools in your life um, so that they can use them with their clients and have even more of a ripple effect of change. And I think that's too, like where the podcast also came into play as well, because of the platform, we, we have such a huge platform um, with the podcast and with social media, um, being able to empower women, specifically women, um, or people identifying as women um, with tools that can drastically change their lives became a part of my mission. So I love that. So yeah, that's what happened. So with that first investment, obviously you must have been pretty damn terrified to make that type of investment in yourself. How, mm. what advice would you have for someone who is about to take that first step in putting in money into their business or into personal development so that they're able to move their business forward um, to get over that fear and to just jump? I would have to say, just do it. Um, I think the main thing that holds so many people back is that investment or where's the money going to come from? And for some people, that is a real thing. Like they, they might not have that, the actual money in their account, but also knowing that like the tools that you're going to learn, like you're drawn to this program for a reason or to that person for a reason, right? Imagine how valuable it is going to be having learned what that person knows that you're about to invest with and how impactful it will be for your business or your life. And what's the return on investment look like? What is their track record been, you know? And like all that's possible when you say yes to yourself, you know? So for me, I guess the the main motivator and something that I like to ask um, my students is, what is it costing you not to do it? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What have been your biggest lessons and your biggest wins as an entrepreneur? Biggest lessons is that it doesn't have to be perfect. (laughs) Um, Actually, perfection is a pretty low standard to strive for considering it's non-existent. Yes. Um, (laughs) um, And I think for a long time, perfection was something that I was striving for. And that's why there was never any movement because I never did anything because it was never perfect, right? So my biggest lesson um, in that realm was like, just strive for excellence and what I view as excellent instead, because that's going to keep the ball rolling and the momentum going and 1% better than I was yesterday. Um, My biggest wins as an entrepreneur, I would say just taking a step back and looking at all of the impact that has like that I've made just from a simple investment two years ago in my own personal development that created all of this. And I just sometimes, I think sometimes when you obtain like all this success, we lose sight of like how far we've come. And I think just being able to sit back and be like, wow, like I've created this, I've replaced my corporate income to the point where like corporate who, (laughs) you know, like, it's just so, um, I just feel so grateful. So, yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So 
I want to dive into the practices, <laughs> the tools that you have, the things that you've been certified in, the very long list of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hypnotherapist, time techniques, and EFT. Would you be able to share exactly what each of them is, what it does for you, how it can benefit you, and when you should be using them? Yeah. So I think for um, each specific client, um, the toolbox of techniques, like any of them could really be interchanged with one another. So for hypnosis specifically, I use that for really fully embodying what the end result is for somebody, like what that goal is that they're going to um, be working towards. So you're able to create like this intense, like visceral feeling um, that their body just responds to. And with hypnosis specifically, it goes directly to your subconscious mind and can rewire you. So you're on the path for success. So hypnosis is amazing for, um, so many things. I mean, people use it for smoking, cessation, and weight loss. I specifically like to use it for goal setting and um, imagining that dream life that you are creating and giving the subconscious like really um, powerful suggestions as far as keeping them on track and in their pursuit of those goals. Um, with time techniques, it's specifically used um, to release limiting decisions, um, to release limiting beliefs. So the predecessor to a limiting belief is a limiting decision. I don't know if you are familiar with that or not, but like basically a decision made over and over again creates a belief. So when we uh, eliminate a decision, you're eliminating something at the root cause. So if you were to imagine like a string of pearls, for example, and like that anchor string of, of the string of pearls, like that end piece, if you were to just like release that one pearl, like everything else falls off that string of pearls, that's essentially what happens with time techniques. So you go back to this limiting decision and you can release it, which essentially limiting decisions keep us in that cycle of stuck. They keep us in those um, self-sabotaging patterns because we choose to believe something about ourselves, right? So with time techniques, we're able to release those to help somebody to be on track for um, achieving all of their goals uh, and all of their dreams. I'm so sorry if you hear Mr. Julian screaming <laughs> in the background. That's okay. Um, and then uh, with also with time techniques, you can release um, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt at the root cause of those really strong emotions as well. And then additionally, um, you can use this. It's uh, you're essentially ex exploring a timeline and you can use this to go into the future too to see what you would need to do in order to create that success for yourself. And it essentially helps you to gather more resources um, when on the pursuit of achieving your goals, which is pretty cool. And uh, with EFT, um, have you ever used EFT before? Yeah, I've done it with like, I think it's Brian Yates and then Gala Darling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love Gala Darling. Yes. <laughs> um, she's like one of the people that I initially heard of EFT from. Um, so with EFT, it can be used for physical ailments. It can be used for um, limiting beliefs. It can be used for any frustrations that you're experiencing. So I like to call EFT like the ticket to um, really activate your power of manifestation like instantly. So a quick little story about EFT. So I was really resistant uh, about like using it um, in my own life and also with my clients because I thought it looked silly. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Like yeah. <laughs> when you're, you know, sitting there tapping on your head and under your armpit, it's like, okay, what are these people doing if you've never heard of it or seen it done before? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so I was like, all right, I, you know, the certification I enrolled in, yeah, like they say they use it and that it works really well, but like, I'm just going to skate by and not kind of use that one. I'll leave that one on the back burner. And um, I was away at a retreat. Uh, it was January of 2020. So it was one year after I started my business. And I had the... Um, I had the opportunity to talk with one of my mentors about some of the major shifts that happened for her to create like massive success. And she said, all I started to do was tap every morning. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? 
please explain. And she goes, yeah, because I was tapping every morning. I was releasing any frustrations or self doubts and limiting beliefs that I had. And I was manifesting like crazy and experiencing quantum leap after quantum leap because I was tapping into how I wanted to feel. I was like, ah, interesting. So she challenged me to do EFT to tap every day for a week. I'm like, all right, I can do that for a week. So I, I tapped for one full week and I was mind blown because that was the first ever week that I had created 10 K in my business ever. That was the most money I ever made in my business. And what I started to realize is that I was showing up differently. I was releasing the frustrations. I was tapping into how I wanted to feel. I was channeling my higher self. I was feeling awesome. So obviously, you know, with EFT, it's like this energetic high (laughs) that you experience. And I was like, Oh, Oh my God, everyone needs to learn EFT. <laughs> so it changed my life. EFT in and of itself changed my life. Um, and for those of you who don't know what EFT is, just go and like look on YouTube or just tap for a day. I can tell you it will change your life. It's like, um, it's like the same type of uh, work that you do with like ancient um the like ancient Chinese practices of like acupuncture, acupressure. I like to um, compare it to Reiki because Reiki is just amazing and it works with like the chakras and like meridians and stuff. But EFT basically works with the meridians in your body and basically clears out old stuck energy and replaces it with like brand new high vibe, next level posh spice, like holy crap, I could take on the world energy. So (laughs) I love <laughs> it's addicting too. Like once you get started, you do, yeah. like I would just do video after video after mm-hmm. video. I'm like, I can't just sit here for two hours. I need to get to my day. It's so good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yes, definitely. I can talk about it all day long. I know. I there's so much more I want to cover in this episode, but oh, I could definitely like dive more into specifically the time techniques one with you. Um, mm. but maybe another time. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) All right. So have you ever personally struggled with limiting beliefs or a a negative mindset? You know, how did you deal with it? What exactly was it about? So I, I think we all struggle with limiting beliefs and negative mindset, right? We're human having human experiences and no matter what for, for me, okay, I'll always keep it on myself for me, no matter what level of my journey that I'm on, new things pop up and it's just normal, you know, um, as you up level, as you experience things you've never experienced before, there's always something that's going to pop up for me. Now I have a history of, um, addiction. So I'm in recovery for drugs and alcohol. I'm also in recovery for an eat from an eating disorder as well. And something that always has popped up for me was not being pretty enough, not being skinny enough, not being enough. And while yes, I work through those every single time I work through it, there's always been another level and another layer to go deeper down with. And for me personally, working through my limiting beliefs and negative mindset was essential. Like it's essential. It continues to be essential because, um, I think that seeing, my life, um, as if I didn't have anything else to work on would be, I think that would be more of an issue (laughs) than, you know, the limiting beliefs that are popping up, but knowing that I have these tools now that I can continuously, um, go into my toolbox and be like, okay, Amanda, you're experiencing the feeling of not being good enough right now. Where is that stemming from? What was the trigger? All right, let's tap on that. Cool. All right. So now that we've tapped on that, now it's coming up for me. Okay. Let me do a meditation and a journaling prompt or something along those lines. Um, so those are some of them that, you know, continue to pop up for me. Um, I, I don't think I've released them fully yet. And I, I mean, I expect to eventually, but I also know that as I continue to up level more stuff will come up at the same time. That makes sense. Absolutely. 
And I think it's important for people to realize and not to put expectations that you're going to clear something right off the bat. Like I got super frustrated with myself in the beginning because I was like, I thought I dealt with this and it's still Mm -hmm. coming up and it gets super discouraging at times. But like you said, as you're growing, as you're up leveling, things will pop up again that you might just need to go deeper with. Yeah. Yeah. And that's totally normal. Mm -hmm. And I think for us to think that like one day we'll wake up and never have a a problem (laughs) or a limiting belief or something. I mean, well, in theory, it sounds amazing. Um, But I also think that means you're not experiencing any growth either. So Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. All right. So what in your experience, what are the most common blocks that we must be working on in order to be successful in our business and our lives? Like, what do you see in your community, your clients, the common the common themes that are coming across? Ooh, um, you know, I think it's always, it always comes down to like worth and value. Um, and that kind of like physically manifests in money blocks and, um, lack. So I definitely think that money mindset specifically, um, is essential for working, um, a successful business because it's definitely the differentiator between a hobby and a business, mm-hmm. um, like really getting deep into the money blocks. But I also think um, money blocks and money mindset is extremely important because it's very closely um, related to our relationships in life too. So I noticed for me, um, I, before I did like lots of work on my money mindset, um, I had a very like anxious and avoidant (laughs) attachment style to money where like, I just didn't want anything to do with it. And if I did see my bank account, I'd like freak out. I realized that, um, my relationships were very similar to like, there were things that I would avoid in my relationships, whether it was with, you know, my husband or my mom or anyone who was like really close to me. So I think that um, money mindset and really just working on how we view our value and our own worth specifically is a game changer when it comes to um, just life in general. Yeah, absolutely. What is your advice on what we should be doing to work on our money mindset? Ooh, I think just getting really cozy with your cash. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As uncomfortable as it might be, like going through like a complete audit of your finances um, and and making sure that you have a money date on a a weekly basis. So um, for me, I have like this spreadsheet that I, I use. I put all of my business um, investments in there. I put all of my life expenses in there. I put all of my income in there. But if you were to ask me two years ago, like what dollar amount was in my bank account? I'd be like, <laughs> I haven't looked in four years. I have no idea. But like, I didn't want to know, you know? So mm-hmm. when I shifted my relationship and made it more of a loving relationship with my money, where I was like going in, I was giving thanks. And there I had like all of my clients listed or all of my students were there. And like, whether it was a pay in full or a payment plan, like I just got to look at it every day and I would give gratitude, not specifically to the dollars, but to the people who I was receiving the dollars from, because that's something for me, like the gratitude there really helped me um, feel a lot different about the money that was coming in too. So I would say get cozy with your cash and do like a money date and give thanks to your money and like, you know, just write it a letter or something like writing your money a letter and like about all of the fun things that you want to do with money and how it's going to help you. And, you know, I think when we think about money, initially, I think people in my space, in my containers, initially the response that comes up with money are a lot of negative words Um, a negative connotation. And I think that the conversation needs to be normalized and the relationship with money um, can be more of a loving one. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely resonate with that. I had, I mean, I still have moments where I'm like, I don't even want to look at my bank account and it's not even because it's bad. I just don't even want to like look at income and like all that type of stuff. And I don't want to do my like bill payments. Like I just don't want to deal with it at all. And I make it into like this Mm -hmm. big deal where like it gets so complicated 
that like my brain just shuts down and I'm just like, no, I'm done. And I'm like, seriously, you can't add two numbers. Like, are you, What's wrong with you? But yeah, I definitely encourage yeah. the, the weekly money dates. Cause then it kind of like makes it, it normalizes it in your life. And then yeah. it feels so stressful after getting used to it. Yeah. You know, it was, um, a major shift for me too, was I had, like I said earlier, I had this like anxious avoidant attachment to money. Like I just didn't want to know, like, I didn't want anything to do with it. I didn't want to know. I didn't want to look. So that actually, um, translated into a really, um, (laughs) weird relationship with my husband because I would always like feel um, like I would feel attacked in a way because I didn't want to have a relationship with money. And he did all the finances when we first got married. And if he would ask me about like a charge on our credit card or something like that, I would get like in the defense mode. Mm -hmm. And it was never his intention to put me in a defensive. It was never like an ill intention on his part. It was just a question. And because I had such a crappy relationship with money, that's how I took it. And something that was a major shift for, for me with money and my relationship is now every month, me and my husband actually have a money date together. And like, I have my tea, he goes downstairs, we sit in front of the computer together, we chat about the goals that we have for the month with our money. And then we go through like our, um, like the finances and different investments that I've made. And he's made it, um, a point to call all of my spending investments because that's something that sits better with me. There you go. <laughs> you would be like, well, what was this investment at anthropology? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right. And I'm like, that was a really good sweater and it definitely is an investment. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but for real though, um, it actually helped reshape our relationship in a really good way. And like, you know, things, things are just, I wouldn't have it any other way. So that's another big suggestion is like, if you're feeling like about money, like go through it with a partner and like do it together. I love that. And I love that you made it fun, right? You got a cup of tea, you guys sat Mm. together, you like, you made it like a fun little date that you guys do. And you change the language that you use to make it something that's like sits better for with you. And I think it also helped him too, because, you know, of course, everybody brings their own baggage to relationships, but they also bring their own amazingness to relationships too. And like, I think we both had like this weird relationship with money and like being able to kind of um, dive into it together and like, just see what each other needed to be more comfortable or even excited about it was like huge. So yeah. Love that. All right. So what daily actions do you suggest that we should take to improve our mindset over time? Ooh, I think um, my, my biggest suggestion is coming up with like a kick-ass morning ritual that like makes you feel rich, like literally rich um, from the inside out too. And something that you can do in order to come up with this incredible um, routine in the morning would be to ask your higher self for suggestions. So what I like to do is like, so my higher self, I call her posh spice because obviously, Mm -hmm. but like, (laughs) but I'm like, well, what would posh do every morning? Like, what is like my version of posh? And like, what does she do every single morning? Like, well, she definitely is like going for a walk and getting grounded. She's definitely having fun in the kitchen and making something really high vibe. She's meditating, doing breath work and all the things. So am I doing that now? Well, some days I am when Julian sleeps the whole night and like other days I'm not, but the way that I can fully connect to posh spice is like really implementing her practices that I've defined into my morning routine. And it really, really helps with like, number one manifesting, because how could you not feel amazing when you're like sitting in a room full for me, a room full of crystals and cards and affirmation decks and all the things when I'm doing breath work and meditating. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, I would definitely say like, come, come into contact with your higher self and ask her what her routine looks like in the morning and start implementing day by day, um, different threads of that and see how that makes you feel. I love that. I definitely, um, second the whole posh spice vibe, (laughs) Victoria Beckham (laughs) all the way. 
holy crap of course that you know what the best part about thinking of posh spice she's victoria beckham and like she's a badass businesswoman she's oh, a God. hot mom she's got like cute little kids she has a hot husband oh <laughs> like, my god like, yes like literally everything and her alter ego is posh spice like what's better than that i know she's got it I made know, like i don't yeah. yeah we all need a little posh in our life <laughs> For sure. It's funny because um, I used to call my alter ego Sasha Fierce because mm. I mean, Beyonce is amazing. Yeah. But one of my clients once said that her alter ego was Posh Spice. And I was like, can you define what that means? <laughs> <laughs> and from that day forward, I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I'm stealing Posh from you. She is now mine. <laughs> I might have to take her myself. So. I know. There's a little posh for everyone. There you go. I love it. All right. So the last question before we get into what you have available um, is about fear. So how do we avoid letting fear stop us from going after our dreams, whether it has things to do with our business, with our lives, all of that stuff? Ooh, I, you know, how do we stop fear? I mean, that's a good question because I think we all do experience fear and it's healthy to experience fear. Sometimes I think it just comes down to if it's a healthy fear or an unhealthy fear. Um, but something that helps me is that I know that everything on the other side of fear is literally, um, everything that I've wanted. I don't know if you ever saw the Will Smith, uh, YouTube video where he's like jumping out of an airplane, but if you haven't, you have to watch it. It will make you cry. It's like, it's just incredible. Um, I think specifically, I have to always just ask myself, why, where am I experiencing this resistance? And like, what specifically will this resistance, um, like when I lean into it, what will it make possible? And what does avoiding it do for me? And I think when I answer those two questions, it makes things really clear if whether what I'm experiencing is like a fear of like something I shouldn't be doing or whether it's just a fear of the unknown and like what could potentially happen for me. So what becomes possible when I give in and lean into this resistance that I'm experiencing? Because I think, I mean, healthy fear is just a resistance against that upper level that we're bumping up against. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And like, for me, I'm just jumping in here is stop overthinking it stop even thinking about it in general. Like there's a couple of situations in the last little while that terrified me, terrified mm. me to my core to do. And without thinking about it, I just agreed to it. I said, yes, I'm doing it because the moment I start thinking about things, I talk myself out of it. I make it yeah. a bigger deal than what it is. And then I just back out. Yeah. Yeah. So you can also ask like, a question to your higher self and just be like, well, would, would posh do this? Exactly. <laughs> and if she would, well, okay, like, let's do it. The answer is yes today. Um, you know what it reminds me of the five second rule, <laughs> do you ever hear of the five second rule where it's just like, give yourself five seconds and just freaking do it. Yeah. <laughs> there. Love that. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into what you have available to offer your community. So Talk to me about your, your offerings, your services, courses, all that good stuff. Ooh. Um, so I have one offer that is a year round offer. Um, it's called the sparkle system certification. And basically what we are, um, we're an accredited, um, internationally recognized certification in five modalities. So it's life and success coaching, um, hypnotherapy, time techniques, emotional freedom technique, and, um, EF, did I say EFT? emotional freedom technique kind of yeah technique. yeah and uh neuro-linguistic programming so sorry there's so many um no but basically uh we do offer this year round and we have a retreat coming up in october in person and another retreat coming up next june and that's essentially where we pace our students but we're a business training and um the training to become certified as a life coach and nlp practitioner so um, it's called the Sparkle System. It's amazing. Check it out. You can go to my website. Um, yeah. So that's really what what we have going on all the time, and it's the best. So awesome. go there and check it out. <laughs> Love that. All right. So if anybody wants to learn more about you, where can they connect with you? Where do you hang out the most? 
I'm mostly on Instagram at Inner Beauty Bible, I N N E R Beauty Bible B Y B E L. And you can find me sometimes on YouTube, but not really. <laughs> so don't go there. <laughs> but you can check out the YouTube if you're looking for some tapping videos or recorded hypnosis videos, things like that. Um, but you can find me on Instagram. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us today and for sharing your story and your journey, but also for giving us incredible advice on how we can shift our limiting beliefs and rise above that fear that often holds us back in life and in business. Yay. Well, thank you so, so much for having me. This was amazing. And I enjoyed connecting with you and your audience. So thank you so much. I'm Jessica, and thanks for tuning in today to Love Unplugged, the podcast. If there are any questions or topics you'd love answered on the show, head on over to www.projectloveco.com and share your request with me. If you haven't yet, go to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and share it with a loved one. Your feedback means the world to me, and the community we've created is what fuels our discussions here. After all, this is all for you. Join me next time for another Unplugged Conversation.